Buzzheads, welcome to another episode of That Buzz Guy Podcast. I'm Curtis Tucker, your host of the show. I'm glad you guys are here. Don't forget, if you're listening on the podcast, that I am also doing these videos for the YouTube channel, and that's youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. Or if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, don't forget that you can also listen on your favorite podcasting apps if you guys are driving, doing the uh, dishes or out cutting the grass, you can uh, listen to the podcast. So please leave me a review on either one of those. And if you go to the uh, YouTube channel, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, that gives me some different options and benefits that I can do with videos. So uh, please subscribe there. And also, if you can subscribe to the podcast, so you don't miss an episode, and also helps me with uh, some stuff on iTunes as well. So appreciate you guys checking in again. I just wanted to shout out to everybody that's been sending in questions and comments. I really appreciate that. Go ahead and keep sending those in and send in some show ideas as well because there is nothing scripted here. Well, not really scripted, but, uh, you know, I'm just kind of going to go willy-nilly for a while just to try to help you guys out. So don't forget, uh, right now this podcast is all about trying to get you guys to be able to start your own businesses, your own side gigs from home. So you don't have to go back to that job. I know we're up to, I believe, 30, over 33 million people out of work. So a lot of people are needing income. One of the easiest ways uh, to make income is uh, to work from home online. Now, it's not easy and it doesn't happen overnight. So that's why I want you guys to get started right now, because the second best time to start other than right now is uh, a long time ago. So uh, yeah, I hope if you've listened, so if this is your first episode of listening to that buzz guy, uh, my number one thing is to get started and get started now. If you've been listening to prior episodes and you haven't gotten started, what's wrong with you? Um, I don't know, you know, what's wrong with you guys. So right now you can start, I want you to start anything. If you're just listening, start anything. You can start it for free. I want you to start a blog. If you like to type and uh, do that kind of written word, you can go to blogger.com. You can go to Tumblr. You can go to Wix, Weebly. You can set up free websites there just to get started. That's not going to be your permanent website, but that is going to get you started. Or if you want to try uh, listening like I'm doing here on the podcast, you want to try your own uh, hand at podcasting because you like audio better, you download the free Anchor app and you get started on there. You just download it, set up an account, you start talking right into your phone. No microphone, no mixer, uh, no special equipment, and they will help you upload those to places like iTunes and things like that. And again, getting started on this stuff, you don't need to tell anybody that's out there. This isn't to start attracting an audience. This is to get you guys started. Number one, it's going to get you started. Number two, it's going to get you uh, starting to get consistent because I want you to keep posting. And then it's also going to start teaching you. You're going to learn if you're doing a website, you're going to learn how to upload photos, how to optimize things, just how to type. If you're doing uh, podcasting, you're going to learn how to, you know, not say um like I do all the time or, you know, how your voice sounds. Maybe you can improve your voice and stuff like that. And then also, or if you don't want to do either one of those and you want to do video, just pull out your phone and start recording yourself and then upload that to a free YouTube channel. You guys, that's three different ways you guys can start your side gig right now, right now, tonight, right now, and uh, get yourself started. So that's my number one thing is I want you guys to get started. If you have no clue as to what's even going on, go back to uh, my prior uh, podcast episodes and they will give you a little bit of help to get you started. So tonight's episode is just a little bit of a continuation of the web stuff because uh, number one, after, well, number one is get started. Number two, consistency. Number three, don't quit. Number four, let's put number four as everybody needs a website. So we've talked about getting a domain name, where to host your website, uh, different things like that. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the... Um, 20 elements or things that you need once you get a website going and, and we're talking about more your permanent website, not, not the free ones that you're going to start out with, but when you finally move to WordPress or something else, kind of a paid version of your website, uh, these are going to be the 20 elements that I'm going to want you guys to have on your website. Now, there's a lot more than 20 and we'll get into those uh, in episodes later on, but this is the, this is the, the beginning 20 
that I think everybody should have no matter, pretty much no matter what kind of a website that you have. So, um, and again, this is, you can catch this also at curtistucker.com or thatbuzzguy.com. They both go to the same website. And what I do is I type these out first to kind of give me a guide of what I'm going to be talking about. So all of these are listed out on that website, these 20 essential elements of a website, as said by Curtis Tucker. Now, um, you know, everything that I'm telling you guys, don't forget, you know, I'm one of you guys. I'm the guy sitting at home. I'm still making money. I'm still, you know, my full-time business is sitting here in my shorts working from my office at home and uh, raising my girls. So I'm not a guru. I'm not selling a course. I'm not selling a mastermind. I'm not selling a book. I'm not trying to get you guys to get people to get people to get people to sign up for something. This is all just uh, me trying to share what I know with you guys. You guys, please share what you know with me. And uh, then if you guys share something with me that I don't know, I will share it with everybody else. So this is all about us, all about you, all about people being able to either make money working at home or just have a hobby or a side gig that gives you something to do. I mean, don't waste your life watching television. If you've got uh, information or things that you need to share with people, use one of these formats online, social media, websites, uh, the internet. Use that to get uh, your thoughts and the things that you know out to other people. So that's what this is all about. Uh, maybe later down the line, I will try to figure out a way of making money with this, but that's not my major concern right now. The you know I've been thinking about doing the podcast for years and years, and with the COVID-19 thing, I thought, you know, I better hop on here and start teaching people how to get online. So, so we're going to get you guys online. Like I said, go to Tumblr, Blogger, Wix, Weebly. That'll get you online. Or just go set up a WordPress website, and we'll get you guys started. So these are going to be the 20 most essential website elements. Uh, number one, and if you guys are just starting out, you may not have this one yet, but a logo. And if you don't have a logo, just be sure you have the name of your website. And that basically needs to go at the top of the website in the header, and it needs to be on every single page of your website. And so the cool thing about WordPress is, you know, they've got a header area, a footer area, sidebar, and basically anything in one of those areas shows up on every page of the website. So you really just have to put the logo on in your header and it's going to show up uh, throughout your website. So uh, that helps with, you know, branding. It helps with uh, just people, you know, instantly recognize or will know well, what your website is and, and the name of your company. So uh, what you're going to want to do is upload a JPEG or a PNG. That will be your logo file. that be an image file. And when you upload that to WordPress or wherever, be sure uh, images have alt tags and you want to put the name of your company in the alt tag. They also have a description and you might also want to put the name of your company in the description as well. And then when Google indexes those images, they are optimized. And when somebody's searching for your company, uh, some a lot of people do image searches. So your logo will pop up number one for your company. So logo and name at the top of the website, number one. Number two, uh, a homepage. Now this one pretty much goes without saying. Uh, some of you people are going to be creating websites with, uh, you know, in inner pages where you're going to be trying to do, and and I do not do sales funnels, but some of you might. Uh, there may be internal pages where people are going to land. So what you're going to find out is as we get going and you start building your website and it gets bigger and bigger and more popular, is people are going to start popping into your website on other pages other than your homepage. So at the top of your menu bar, you want to go ahead and have a link that's either home homepage, index, usually we just call it home. And then that way it takes them back to your homepage. And your homepage is basically your introduction. It's telling people who you are, why you're there, what you're gonna do for them, maybe a, a little snippet of your story. You need to have uh, some good visuals on there like your logo and some other stuff. But uh, your homepage is kind of that first impression. You want it to load quickly because if it doesn't load fast, people are going to, uh, you know, Back, back, go back and go find another one. 
So make sure it loads fast, but your home page, that's number two. Number three, when they come to your page, you need to probably have a call to action. So when they get to your page, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to the next page to find out some more information? Do you want them to sign up for an email? Do you want them to uh, leave you a question or a comment? Do you want them to pay you? Do you want them to buy something? So think about what the major uh, call to action for your website is going to be. And if you don't have one to start off with, you know, this is a list that, that you may have to work towards, but if you don't know exactly what your call to action is going to be, that's okay. You can leave it off, but eventually uh, you're going to need that. And so, and a lot of what I'm going to be telling you guys, especially these first few episodes, I'm going to assume that some of you are really new and what we call newbies. And so Hopefully I don't bore some of you others, but uh, when when you build a website, usually your pages are kind of long, so you have to scroll to get to the bottom of the page. Well, when you go to a page, the area that you see before having to scroll is called above the fold, and it's like a newspaper. When you fold the newspaper, that top portion is called above the fold. Well, on a website, the portion that you see before you have to scroll is called above the fold. So you want to have your call, you want to have your logo and name, and you want to have your call to action above the fold. So don't put your call to action at the bottom. You know, go ahead and have uh, email sign up because some people may not scroll down. You want to have all that somewhere up at the top. Could be at on your sidebar at the top of your sidebar or something, but have a call to action on there. Uh, next thing, number four, is to have an about page. And like I said, on the home page, you might have a little teaser of a short story of who you are or why you're there. And up at the top, you're going to need to have a link to an about page. And you can either call it about, about us, you know, something like that. But the the thing is, if you stick with kind of what the industry standard is, then it's easier for people to know where to find stuff. So if you just call it about, people pretty much know that if they go to about, they're going to find out more information about you. If you name it something wacky like, I, I, I'm just pick anything, it's, people may not exactly understand what that link is for. So, you know, it's not going to hurt to call it about. But on that about page, it's going to describe in a little bit more detail about who you are, what your story is. You might include a photo of you or your business or your location. Uh, you might have some history there with even more photos. You could have an introductory video there. You could even have an introductory video on your homepage. But the about page is just where you're going to give more information about who you are and why you're there. And, um, you know, you can make it as long or as short as you want, because a lot of times if somebody's going to take the time to go ahead and click on your about page, then they're probably going to read it. And it's where you can have some fun and kind of cut loose and let people know who you are. So uh, number five is a blog. So we talked a little bit uh, on the on one of the prior episodes, the difference between a website and a blog. And basically a blog is just a part of a website. So uh, you could start a WordPress website and not turn on the blog and not have a link to it. Nobody would even know it was there. But I suggest that everybody have a blog. If you're going to have a website, you might as well have a blog. Now, uh, when I say that, I don't want you to have a blog and then never, ever, ever update it. If you're never, ever, ever, ever going to update it, don't, don't add a blog. But uh, again, the blog is something that you update. They're, they are called posts. You can keep it fresh every week. And what that does is it helps you in your Google rankings because Google likes things that are fresh. They like updated uh, information and material. So you are competing with uh, Twitter and Wikipedia and some of those other places that have fresher content. So the fresher your content can be, the better off you're going to be as far as the ranking. So go ahead and put a blog on your website and have a link to it. Uh, contact page, uh, that one's pretty explanatory. So when when they go to your contact page, that's where they're going to get a little more detail about uh, maybe there's, I would suggest using an email form, a map, have your phone number, have your address, and uh, test everything out when you put it on there, make sure it all works. And you will also maybe want to have uh, your hours and things like that. But uh, the contact page is just the quickest way that they can contact you. If you guys, if you're, if you're working somewhere or uh, you've got more than one person in your office, uh, put, uh, you know, all of the 
different emails there, put all the phone numbers, put your fax number, just all your regular contact information. That one's pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory. So number eight is a privacy policy. Now this is something very boring and some of you that have never built a website or don't know anything about web design, you're probably wondering what that's all about, but it's kind of a, a rule that came about because when people come to your website, sometimes, well, a lot of, almost all websites, especially commercial websites, will collect information about you. When you go to the website, they're going to put cookies on your browser and they're going to track you. So they're going to know when you, you know, where you came from, where you went to once you left. If you return to the website, they're already going to recognize you because the cookies are probably still going to be in your browser. So really the privacy policy is just letting people be aware that you are going to be, your website is going to be installing cookies, that you're not going to be sharing that information with third parties. Now, if you are going to share it with third parties, you need to tell people in your privacy policy that uh, all of their information is going to be sold and shared, but most people don't do that. So, um, and I would put a link to your, you know, have your privacy policy and you can go to Google and just type in uh, privacy policy examples or samples and you're going to get a whole bunch of those and just, uh, I think Google may even have some, uh, just grab one of those and switch out, you know, whatever company name they have and put your name in there and then um, put a link in your footer to the privacy policy and that way no matter what page somebody comes into your website on, they're going to see that link and they're going to be able to get to your privacy policy. And I doubt, I doubt even 1% of uh, people in this world have ever gone and looked at somebody's privacy policy, but um, you just kind of need it there. Uh, next thing is a sitemap. Um, sitemaps can be what we call XML or they can just be kind of more static HTML. There are also some plugins for WordPress that will help you. And basically what a sitemap is, is it's just a page that has all of the links in one place to all the pages on your website. And what that really does is when uh, search engines come and they spider your website, if there's some internal pages that either don't have links to them or are buried really, really deep, the sitemap helps the search engine find those and it helps uh, all those pages get spidered really quick because it's right there again you might want to have that sitemap link in your footer on every page of your website. And that way, uh, again, it's easier to get found. And then also, you know, uh, especially if you do like an HTML one, it just tells people, it's kind of like a directory. So if somebody comes to your website and there's a page that they're looking for and they can't really find it, um, if they go to your sitemap, they might be able to find it a little quicker. You might, you know, put the page links and categories or arrange them alphabetically or just make it easy for the people to be able to find the pages that they're looking for. But that would be your sitemap. Now to make um, finding pages even easier, here's the next one. Number 10 is I think everybody should have a search box on your website. And there's different ways of doing that. Uh, WordPress themes come with their own search boxes. There's widgets, there's plugins, uh, even Google. Google you know, once you're um, indexed into Google, Google will give you code for a search and you put that on your sidebar. And when people search, they, they're actually searching through the Google uh, search engine, but the results are being shown on your website. So, um, and I use Google search on a lot of my websites. So uh, it just makes it easier. Like if somebody comes to your website and they're looking for an article on branding, they can just type in branding and Google or whatever search feature you're using will bring up all of the pages and posts that have to do with branding. And it makes it a lot easier for those people to find what they're looking for and to get around your website. And you want to make things as easy as possible for everybody. And I always, usually I put the search box above the fold on every page and I usually stick mine at the top of the sidebar, but you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, number 11, how about some social media icons? And there's a lot of plugins, especially with WordPress. There's a lot of places where you can go and you can actually find all kinds of, just you wouldn't believe how many different icons you can find for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. 
And what you want to do is you want to link every one of those to your actual account on those platforms and then put those icons somewhere on your website. You could have them at the top. Now, the thing is, if you put them at the top, you know, there's a chance somebody might see them and click on them and, and not even read your website. They may go straight to your social media. So if you put them on the sidebar a little further down or put them at the bottom in your footer, uh, people will read your content before they get to them and then they won't leave. But putting them at the top is not the worst of things. If somebody's coming to your website, and then hopefully they're going to at least stick on your website for at least one page. But um, everywhere that you have a presence on social media, go ahead and make an icon for that account and put that on your website. And they can be, you know, just tiny itty bitty little icons. Uh, number 12, you need a responsive theme or template. And I, we may have talked about this before, but basically a responsive theme just means when somebody comes to your website, uh, the, bra the, the, the code, the JavaScript is going to recognize what kind of device they're on. And that is the arrangement of the website they're going to be presented with. So if they come on a computer, they're going to get that nice, big, wide shot of your website. If they come on a little phone, basically it's going to rearrange your entire website into one long column. And uh, it's going to show that column on a phone. But the cool thing about that is it, arrange it arranges it really nice and everything is very, very readable. You don't have to stretch or zoom in to read anything. And the cool thing about a responsive theme or template is it's all done automatically. So if somebody comes on an iPad, it will give them even a different version than the other two, and it'll kind of arrange your website. So a responsive theme, definitely need that. And again, I'm going to encourage everybody to eventually have a WordPress website have a theme and make sure it is a responsive theme. That's what I use for thatbuzzguy.com. So uh, next thing, number 13, meta tags. Uh, this is for you newbies out there. You're going to have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you go to a website, especially a homepage, and you right click uh, somewhere on the homepage, a lot of times um, a little window will pop up with some links and one of them might say uh, view page source, but in the code, there's a lot of code in that's hidden for web pages. And one of those codes that's hidden in the head header of your website are called the meta tags. And they used to be super duper 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 important back in the day, especially for Google. Now they're not as important, but the um, site title and description are important. So I have seen, I've actually seen some people with professional websites. And so when you're looking at a website, a lot of times in the browser, there's a gray bar at the top and it, it basically tells you where you're at. So if you're on, um, let's say eBay, you know, at the top, it may say eBay, it kind of lets you know, well, that usually comes from the title of the page or the website that you're at. So um, so I've actually been on websites where it says home up there. So it, Google thinks the website is called home. And so you want to be sure and change that. So the meta tags uh, are, again, they're HTML tags that are hidden in the header. You want to make sure that you have a title uh, tag, which is basically the name of the website, the name of your company, and then the description, you want to make sure you have a good description. Now, there are some plugins, um, and there's two major ones for WordPress, and they will help you and tell you what, uh, what to put, not really tell you the words, but they'll tell you the length of those meta tags and kind of give you a score on if you're doing good. So I would use, um, for some reason, I'm not remembering the second one. So I hate to mention one without the other, um, but we'll get the whole SEO thing. We will get into a whole nother episode. And speaking of SEO, that would be number 14. And again, I don't want to get into SEO search engine optimization right now, but um, part of setting up the website in the beginning is the, the SEO is the header doing the title tag and the description tag. And uh, to help with SEO, uh, especially like with WordPress, when you, when you do a new page or a blog post, you want the URL to use the keywords 
for that page. So like if you do a new post on a WordPress blog and the name of the post is how to brand your company, that's what you want to be, have in the URL. You want to have uh, thatbuzzguy.com, how to brand your company. In the old days, it was with WordPress and things, it used to be something like thatbuzzguy.com slash 126754.html. Well, uh, luckily we've gotten away, and so you can actually have it set, and I think it might be set by default now, where when you do a new page or a new post, the, the title, the name of that page is going to be the URL, which really helps with your Google rankings and your description. So when somebody, if your page is, is indexed into Google, that's the part that shows up in the little synopsis of what is on the website. So that, that's important. And then there's just a lot of other things that go with SEO, uh, keywords on your page, headline text, uh, H1, H2, H3 tags, uh, images and uh, overall content. But again, I mean, you could probably have about 20 or 30 episodes just on SEO. So we'll get into that later, but that's something that you want to start thinking about. And if and that's one thing I want you guys to research on your own so you'll get to know a little bit more about SEO and uh, all that good stuff. So number 15, uh, email sign up. I know I talk to a lot, a lot of people and I think people think that email is dead especially with social media and things like that. But uh, email is not dead. If you guys could get you a thousand, one thousand, just one thousand loyal, loyal fans that will buy almost anything from you, you can have a business. You have a successful business. Now, you, you may end up having to have three to five thousand people on your list just to have that one thousand loyal customers. But uh, don't worry about huge, huge email lists, you know, five, ten, twenty thousand just try to get uh, anywhere between 500 and 1,000. The reason you want an email list, even though a lot of people do not open their emails, but if you give them a reason to, like some important information or really good deals, they will open those. But the reason that you want an email list, the reason you want a WordPress website, is because those are things that you own. You can take them with you. You can move them around. And uh, pretty much everything else, your Google rankings, your social media, your Wix, your Weebly, um, those type of things you do not own. They can take those away. They can go bankrupt. They can be gone overnight. Even if you use MailChimp or something like that for your email list, go ahead and back those email lists up and, and save them on your computer. And if something were to happen to a company like, let's say, MailChimp, then you can just uh, reinstall that entire list on another system. But you own that list. And so the email list is very important. You want to make it super duper easy for your fans to sign up. So I would maybe have a sign up list at the top of the homepage somewhere where all they have to do is uh, quickly sign up and then um, handle that email list with care. Don't spam people. Don't bomb them with a bunch of stuff. And especially in the beginning, just maybe uh, send out emails monthly or weekly and get people used to the fact that you're going to be sending stuff out. But do some really good offers. Uh, giving, Doing free giveaways is an easy way to get people to sign up for your email list. And uh, so, uh, again, so pretty much almost all of these that I'm talking about, we could almost have a whole episode in itself just talking about these. But uh, uh, we'll probably have a whole episode on email and sign up and stuff like that. Now, I know... A lot of people are starting to use uh, messaging on the messenger on Facebook and also just uh, text messaging. So we'll see where it goes. I think I don't think email is ever going to go away forever. So it's still a good way to reach a lot of people, especially your fans. And I do have an email list. I've got almost nobody on there. But if you go to thatbuzzguy.com, they're at the uh, almost the top right under like three, my three big boxes there on the beginning. I do have an email sign up. If you guys sign up, I don't know what I'm going to be sending out right now. But um, uh, I know I'm going to be doing some giveaways, especially when I get my t-shirts in. So if you guys want to win a t-shirt or get information or just be updated on what's going on, uh, please sign up for my email list. And I, I think I've got that set up through MailChimp. So uh, you can do a quick search and there are a lot of other companies to use. And in the beginning, you can even just save the emails on your computer. You don't even need a system. But I think uh, a lot of them, like MailChimp and a lot of them, will let you have a free account up into a certain number of emails or a certain number of 
emails that you send out. So go ahead and uh, get started free on one of those and then you can decide, you know, if they start charging you what you want to do from that point. So number 16 is the navigation menu. Basically, when you go to a website, you notice all the links at the top. Uh, that would be your navigation menu. You want to have uh, that at the top. Some people put it at the top and the bottom. Some people have it at the top and then a different one at the bottom, and you can set those up in WordPress and different uh, Weebly, Wix, those things. But basically, that is your links to your the main pages of your website. Now, you can't have a link to every, you know, unless you've got a really small website. You just can't keep adding. You don't want to keep adding links to the uh, menu navigation. So you want to keep that to like the home page, the about, the contact, services. Uh, just your blog, um, you know, just your basics. And I think from some different studies, it seems like back several years back when I was researching it, uh, they said that people don't want more than seven choices when they when they do things or when they get online and come to a website. So I would not go more than seven links in your navigation menu, you know, unless there's some special circumstances that you have to, but try to limit it to seven major links or less. And then there's also a sub menu. So if somebody scrolls over, let's say services, there there can be a drop down and you could have like five, you know, different services. And if they click on one of those, it takes them directly to the page that's just about that service. So that's a way of adding more links to your navigation without having all of them visible. So navigation menu, um, again, you might want to have that at the top and the bottom, but that needs to be in your header, possibly in your footer. And uh, some people actually put it in the sidebar, but uh, you need to have that on every page of your website because you never know exactly what page somebody is going to enter your website. And you want, so when they enter your website, no matter what page, you want it to look professional and look like the rest of the website, meaning logo, header, footer, sidebar navigation, search box, all that good stuff. So um, number 17, Google Analytics. Everybody, almost everybody has a Google account already. Just type in Google Analytics into Google and it will take you to that. And even if you have a Google account, I still think maybe you have to sign up uh, for Google Analytics. It's completely free, but man, it will give you guys some information. So sign up for it, open up the Google Analytic account. They will give you some code. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be talking way over some of your heads, but um, this is all, once you catch on to this, is it's going to be a lot easier than what it sounds like at this point. But they're going to give you some code, and basically all you have to do is take that Google Analytic code and put it in the header or, or the footer, usually the header of your website. And uh, if it goes into the header of a WordPress website, that means it goes onto every page of the website and then... Uh, you know, you might wait uh, several days until it starts collecting data, and then you can go to your Google Analytics account on Google, and it will tell you exactly the number. It, it'll tell you if somebody's on your website. So if there's five people on your website right now and you go to Google Analytics, it it shows you, it tells you there's five people on your website right now, and it tells you what pages they're on. But uh, it also tells you, like, how many people came in the last seven days or 30 days, what pages they went to, what pages they left from, how long they were on the page, uh, just a whole bunch of information. And um, that's just information that helps you guys. So uh, you can kind of see what pages are popular and that helps you know what keywords to concentrate on, what topics to write blog posts about, um, different things like that. It tells you what pages um, people spent the most time on, but Google Analytics, every website needs to have Google Analytics on it. And then just, uh, I don't even have this on the website, but uh, if you have a Facebook account, you might also go ahead and get the code for the Facebook Pixel. And while you're doing it, go ahead and throw that on there. And that will help with your Facebook ads. So when you get to the point where you're wanting to do Facebook ads, if you've been collecting that information through this Facebook Pixel, when you go to do your ad, it's already going to know 
who the people are that are coming to your website, whether they're female, how old they are, how much money they make. And then you can basically put together an ad for your website. Go to Facebook and say, Facebook, copy the pixel um, profile that I built up and, and that knows exactly who to target um, your Facebook ads. I mean, it's just crazy the stuff that's out there that can help you guys with all of this stuff. And I, and I want you guys to learn it. I want, before you guys hire anybody, don't go hire your niece, Betty, to do your Google Analytics. I want you guys to learn it on your own. That way, when you do hire somebody, you guys are going to know whether they're doing a good job or not. So you guys need to learn all this stuff. If this is going to be your business, come on, let's learn it. Let's uh, figure it out. So number 18, an SSL certificate or a secure certificate. And that's just something fairly, I guess I say fairly recently, it's been several years, but uh, Google uh, is saying that uh, you pretty much need an SSL certificate, which basically means your website is a lot more secure and they're going to rank you better than somebody that doesn't have one. If you guys have an e-commerce site or even if you have a regular site and you're selling something where people have to enter their credit card information on a form on your website, it's a must. You must have SSL uh, certificate, a secure one on there, and that will uh, keep people feeling safe and keep people's uh, credit card information from being stolen. So several different reasons. And so when you're checking out and you're looking for which company is going to host your website or your blog, be sure and check and see if they come with free SSL certificates, because if they don't, sometimes they can get expensive depending, and there are different ones, so be aware of that, uh, different degrees of security and safety. But I've noticed lately that there are some WordPress hosting plans out there that say free domain name, free SSL certificate, free backups. You know, you want to get a host that's going to give you as much free stuff as possible for the price. So, but be sure and compare, be sure, make sure that the certificates are, you know, apples to apples, because again, some of them could be a little bit different. So, uh, number 19, a copyright notice. Now, uh, this is just something that you need at the bottom, uh, and it, it literally, I think, is below the footer, and they're usually an area where you can find to change that, and that's basically where you put, you know, copyright 2020, uh, that buzz guy. And it just helps, you know, tell people that uh, everything on your website is copyrighted. Now, the thing is, you don't any, you don't like 100% have to have something, you know, have a circle and the, and the copyrighted on something for it to be copyrighted. So basically, I think since about 1977, anything that you create that is like that written song, visual, the minute you create it, it is copyrighted. Now, where having a copyright notice could come in handy is if somebody disputes it or if uh, you're trying to sue them for damages, I believe if you have the copyright notice and you you know, you know send it, it only cost, I think, maybe somewhere around $35. Um, if you have that piece of paper saying that you've copyrighted whatever it is, then I believe you have a better chance of collecting damages if you sue, if somebody's been making money off of something that you've done and then you sue them, you've got a better chance of getting money out of them if you filed that copyright. But, uh, but anyway, you, you should have the copyright notice on the bottom of all of your website pages and that will help kind of, you know, for newbies that are out stealing stuff, maybe they won't take stuff from your website if they, um, read that and know those copyright notices are on there. So uh, copyright notice number 19 and number 20, the last one on the list is images. This one sounds, uh, you know, kind of sophomoric, but um, I think, you know, I don't know that I even really go to, it's hard to find a website without images on it. When I'm talking images, we're talking photographs or graphics or, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, again, we'll probably have an entire episode where I talk nothing about nothing but optimizing images, you know, for a website. So you need images. They make a website much more visual, 
they hold people's attention and you can get some pretty big uh, images on websites now that load fast. And that's the big deal about images. You got to keep them optimized. So, you know, if you take a, you know, a photograph with your iPhone and you upload it and then you put it in WordPress and it's, you know, five megabytes big, that's not the file that you want to have. And I don't, I think WordPress might reject it, but uh, you don't want to be uploading really thick, heavy, um, big files. You want them to be small, as small as possible. You know, we're talking 16 kilograms or uh, kilobytes, sorry, um, KBs. So um, optimize your photos. There are websites where you can just go and do them online or you can get software programs. Um, I used to use Photoshop all of the time. I, uh, but for optimizing photos, I've actually found that uh, on a Mac, if you just double click on the image, the um, visual text uh, viewer or whatever, I'm trying to think of what it's called, it pops up and it, it allows you to crop photos and to shrink the, the size and everything. So I've, uh, so last couple of years, I've just been using that. So it doesn't have to get complicated, it doesn't have to be expensive to be able to optimize uh, your, your images for your website. So that is the list of 20 essential elements that I think, and again, this is just my list uh, after um, all the websites that I built. So if you haven't heard some of the prior episodes, I did uh, go through a period, about a 10 year period where I built myself 100 websites and I built those on thin content, basically just to get uh, Google AdSense on them and get people to click and had a really good business going with that for, for 10 years. But um, after building those and then, um, you know, dozens and dozens of client websites and then even just another couple of dozen of my own better websites that had even uh, better content, these are the things that, that I've looked at, you know, and noticed that uh, they help make a good website are these 20 elements. And again, like I said, there are going to be more like, you know, uh, just content, just the, the text, the written text, the articles, um, you know, but that, that's stuff that we will, that, you know, you get to down the line. But these are the, the 20 to start off with. Basically, as soon as you flip on your website, you need to start looking at this list of 20 and start adding them as quickly as you can. But again, I would rather you get started and not worry about these, um, but just go to Wix, Weebly, Blogger, Tumblr, and uh, just get started with your website. And then we will figure this stuff out um, after that. But I want, want you guys to get started. And so if you haven't listened to the prior episodes, go back because I do have one on picking a domain name. I've got one on where to get your websites hosted and just different things like that. So I think we'll maybe do something different next episode where maybe we're not talking about websites. Maybe we'll do something as far as video or podcasting or maybe something crazy and wacky. I don't even have an idea for what the next episode is going to be. I know I, I, uh, if you've been to my website, you may notice that uh, kind of a guy of the 70s. And so I do have some blog posts on my website that have to do with the 70s. So if you're interested in that at all, go. And I've got a blog post on there, my 100 favorite memories of growing up in the 70s, which is kind of fun. And you guys head on over and check that out at uh, thatbuzzguy.com. Let me know what you think. But um, I could do a blog pod a uh, yeah podcast episode on that. I'm not sure. You guys let me know if you want me to mix in, you know, that weird of stuff or if you want me to stick strictly to helping you guys get online, branding, marketing, uh, affiliate marketing. So those are the, some of the uh, topics that are coming up in the future. But, you know, like I said, every now and then I go on adventures like uh, meeting Gene Simmons or chasing the solar eclipse if you guys want me to go ahead and do some of those episodes too, where I talk about, you know, those adventures. And the reason that I mix all of that together is because not only do I, you know, get to work from home and work for myself and, and all this, but that gives me the freedom, the ability to go chase tornadoes and to go to presidential elections and to cover that stuff and bring it back as information and news for you all. But uh, just... 
there's a lot of those adventures and opportunities like flying with the Thunderbirds that I would not have gotten to do or been able to do if I hadn't put myself out there online. And that's why I highly encourage you all to get yourself online, um, get your brand online. Oh, that, that's what I was thinking. We may do, I may do an episode on personal branding, basically kind of describing what in the heck it is and why you guys need it. Maybe I'll do that on the next week's episode. So kind of be on the lookout for that. Um, again, if you're listening to this podcast, don't forget it is on video on Curtis Tucker TV at YouTube. And um, so when I, and a lot of the stuff I may be repeating on all the episodes, but again, it's just because I want to pound it into your head. So, so basically what I do is I write out a blog post on thatbuzzguy.com. So I wrote out the 20 essential elements for a website. I kind of type that out and that gives me kind of a guide. So then I turn on the podcast. I'm recording into Audacity on my laptop, but then I'm also filming with my iPhone. And at this point, I don't have a microphone. So on this episode, I do not have a microphone for my iPhone, it's just, I'm just talking right in front of it, so it may sound a little reverby. I'm using a Yeti Blue uh, microphone for the podcast, so it sounds a lot better, and and I'm reading some of the bullet points on the blog. So, But the cool thing is, when I get done, I will take this uh, audio and the podcast, I will upload it to um, Buzzsprout, which I'm using right now, I'll get the embed code and then I'll go to the blog post and I'll put that code at the bottom and then I'll upload the video to YouTube and then I'll get the embed code and I'll go to the post on the blog and I'll paste it there. So when you go to the article on the blog, you're going to get three really cool things. You're going to get the written blog post and then right below that, you're going to get to see, you're going to, there'll be a link, you know, a little player and you just click it and you can actually listen to the episode on the podcast or right below that, you see my smiling face, and you can click on that, and you can actually watch the video or listen to, I'd go ahead and listen to the podcast. That um, audio is going to be a lot better, but um, you can see the YouTube video if you want to see my smiling face. And uh, I'm doing this episode actually a little bit earlier in the evening. Everybody's gone, and so I'm getting to do this a little easier, so uh, earlier. So hopefully I look a little more spry. I've noticed that... Uh, I've done two podcast episodes. I've been a guest on two prior podcast episodes in the last couple of weeks, and I seem a little more animated, a little uh, peppier on those episodes, and I think it's just because those were recorded during the day where I've been recording mine late at night and uh, seem a little droopy or lazy. So anyway, I'm going to try to pick up um, a little bit, you know, try to become a little more inspired for you guys, a little more motivated. Hopefully this one is uh, starting to move that way. So um, continue to listen. I appreciate you guys. Go ahead and send questions to buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. I think that email was down for about a week. So if you did send me an email and I did not respond with, uh, it's probably about a week ago, please send it again because it probably never got to me. I accident, I, I deleted the website, um, buzzheadmedia.com, forgetting that I had it set up because of the email. And so uh, as soon as I deleted it, the email quit working, and it took me a week to realize what was happening. So I reinstalled it, and now it's working again. So buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. I uh, I kind of I kind of prefer doing my thing on Twitter, but I'm also on Instagram Facebook, and uh, uh, LinkedIn. You guys can uh, catch me on LinkedIn and then YouTube as well. And again, trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button there. When I get to a 1,000, that just gives me some extra options uh, when I upload videos. So please do that if you can. Please tell all your friends to listen to the podcast. I, again, greatly appreciate you guys. Send me your questions. Everybody, uh, uh, remember rule number one, get started right now. So as soon as you quit listening to this, either go do your first podcast episode, go type your first blog, or go record your first video, 
and then do not stop. And I promise you, you stick with me. You continue to do that for a year. We're going to be looking back a year from now and you're going to be making some money. You're going to be sending me an email saying, woohoo, you know, you made some money. So appreciate you guys. Everybody have a great uh, rest of the weekend and we will talk to you guys soon.